Okay, I didn't know the camera was on. Okay, so hi everyone. This is going to be a response to Mahogany Homemaker's um, video she did about um, writing skills. And in it she talks a lot about whole word learning and phonetic learning when you're learning to read. And I sent her a comment about how I noticed some stuff in um, some of my younger relatives that uh, are in elementary school. And um, I was doing some flashcards with, um, I think he's about five, he's five, he's getting ready to be six next month. And he knows these big words, like he knows computer and he knows the phrase ice cream. But we'll get to something like mouse or pencil. And not only does he not know it, but he doesn't even know how to approach finding out what it is. And so for those of you who don't know, if you haven't seen um, Mahogany Homemaker's video, first off, I recommend it. Um, but also, there, if you didn't see that video, um, the difference between whole word learning and phonetic learning is whole word learning is when you're learning to read in the same way that you would learn to read Chinese. Um, you know, though that language is written using pictures that represent a word, whereas phonetic learning is uh, when you're reading. Uh, is really more best suited for learning English because we use an alphabet. We don't use pictures and we need to recognize that each letter makes a sound and combinations of letters make different sounds. And when you put those together, you can decode a word. So, um, I want to say around 1925 is when in this country they started getting rid of phonetic learning to, to read English and started implementing the whole word system in which you start to learn sight words instead of concentrating on phonetic learning. Now the drawback of whole word learning is you, it, you're you basically just using your memory and when you come up to words you don't know, you're kind of lost. If, you don't, if you've never seen that word before, you don't have the skills to decode that word out and if you learn phonetically how to read, then you can you can learn, you can read anything, you know, and, you know, prior to them starting to do this, and in other countries where they use the same alphabetical system, kids are taught um, phonetically, and at, when you do that, even if a child is very young, like six, seven years old, they can read big words, and they may not know what they mean um, yet, but they can still decode and understand how to say that word and how to read that word. So, um, this is kind of frustrating when I come across this, um, and my brother, um, does this, and really what's more frustrating to me is what he was taught is to guess at things, and my little sister was taught this as well, that when she, they don't know a word, to guess, and to just keep going, and he not only was taught to guess, but to also make up words to put in place of words that he doesn't know. So he would come across a word when we first started reading last year, when he was um, taken out of public school, he was making up words for words that he didn't know and just inserting them whenever he came to that word. So we would come to names that he didn't know. And instead of trying to figure out that name, he would make up a name that had nothing to do with what the name said. So say the name was Alexander. He would make up like a funny, silly name, like Ronald McDonald or something like that, that had nothing to do with the name. And he was taught to not even attempt. If you didn't know it, just make up just whatever word you want. You know, so that was really frustrating to uh, go through. And I had to get him to, you can't do that. You, it, there is value in knowing what the word actually is. So I say that all to get to the point where I'm going to share a couple of tips that I have um, or at least some things that I'm trying to get, um, not only my brother, but when I start working with my cousin this year, um, to try to break them out of that and, and to encourage actually decoding words, actually reading the words and not relying on memory and being satisfied with just, you know, getting by, um, because that, that is, that really is not equipping our children for life. So, um, here's some things that I've, I'm trying. Um, first off, uh, reading. I really think that the best way, and I'm sure, you know, this is like a duh thing, but like 
to expose kids to reading as much as possible. The more words they come in contact with, the better, and the more words they don't know that they have to sound out, and it's necessary to do so, or else you're not going to understand it. Um, so um, we right now are reading, um, and we'll be done in probably next week, um, a series of unfortunate events. And I'm thinking about doing the whole series, but I'm not sure yet. I'm doing some research on what the actual moral content of it's going to be. But this book has a lot of words that are unfamiliar, and it also defines a lot of words. And the author did that uh, intentionally. So what we do is um, we do tandem reading. So what we'll do is my brother, uh, and sometimes I'll have another copy of the text. I'll either run it off on a, a copier or I'll have it on a PDF um, on the iPad. And he will read a page and I will read a page. And that way we are reading out loud. And when he's coming to a word that he's either mispronouncing or a lot of the times what he'll do is he will, and this is a problem with whole word um, learning to read, is words that look similar often get exchanged for each other. So like um has and was. This is this happens all the time. He'll exchange those two because they both are three letters and they both have A S. So those get exchanged a lot. And so to really break him out of that, I you know, when as we're reading, I stop him when he does that and I say, Ah, what is that? And, you know, we'll go back and, and do that. Now if you have a really struggling reader that, you know, is it, you know, you can't stop them every single time, you know, to sound out stuff or else you'll never actually get into the story. And that's kind of where we were last year. Um, what I did was we did um, uh, either I would read a paragraph and he would read one or I would read like half the page and he would read the bottom. And that way he can he's hearing what I'm saying and he's following along. And then he gets to, you know, we get to the point where he is reading that part on his own. And then we just gradually work up and to the point where now we're at, he's reading a page and I'm reading a page. And um, at, at a certain point, he's going to be reading the whole thing. But, you know, again, we're gradually getting up to that. Um, so that's one thing. And also, um, let's see, we get our we get our vocabulary words from uh, books like that as well. And we break them down um as we're saying them and, and making sure we're pronouncing them the right way and that kind of stuff. Um, also, and you guys know I love Spectrum. Um, you can find them anywhere in their cheap. So, uh, Spectrum Phonic. This is going to be, I'm using this for my brother, uh, not my brother, my cousin. Um, this is just a, a good book on phonics. And it doesn't have to be Spectrum, just, you know, any any kind of workbook that's really going to focus us on phonetic learning and the and focus us on the sound of each letter and the combinations of letters. And um, the more we can do that, the better. So um, that's what, one thing I'm doing. Um, we're also, and with my, with my cousin, I'm also going to have him in a book. I'm not going to have him in um, as high a level as my brother. I'm going to, you know, have him down maybe a grade or two. Um, but that's the other thing. We're going to constantly read it. And I think that's really been something that's helped is, you know, constantly being in, uh, some sort of story that they enjoy, you know, and making sure that it's something, you know, if they like mystery stories, if they like fantasy stuff, if they like, you know, trucks or something like that, just keeping them in a book always and reading out loud, um, it is is really key as well because then you can hear and they can hear as well uh whether or not what they're saying makes sense you know when if you're guessing at some of your words and you've kind of been trained into thinking that way it's easy to just start to go through a paragraph and having said a lot of words wrong and replace them with other words that maybe look the same and have no you know understanding of what you just read whereas if we're reading it out loud you know, we can correct mistakes and we can hear the, the mistakes that we're making. Um, last but not least, um, just some reading exercises that I'm, I'm doing from the Spectrum Reading Book. 
Um, and this is going to be for my cousin. This is actually one of Tay's old one. Uh, Tay's my brother. One of Tay's old um, books that he's finished. But my my cousin's going to be in the same one this year. Um, also, I bought a book. Um, it's by Rudolf Leisch. And a fourth of this book, and I think, um, no, oh, never mind. Okay, so the, a fourth of this book is actually drills uh, for um, phonetic learning. So you got lots of drills, and it's like a fourth of the book. When does it start? I think it starts. like right there so you can see it's like it's a good chunk of the book that's dedicated to these drills and I was looking at the and before I bought the book I was looking at the Amazon um, reviews and a lot of people have just done the, the the drills with their kids and really improved their reading um and I think Mahogany Homemaker may be making a, a video that's going to really expand more on on this I'm not going to go too much further into it um but that's really, um, you know, something that, uh, or, or at least the things that I do. Again, it's, none of it's like foolproof. You know, this is just kind of I'm throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, I've noticed that the tandem reading has really helped with my brother. But you know, every child is different, and and you know what works for us may not work for others. But um, you know, that and just immersing immersing them in writing and reading and, and trying to always keep them reading something. So, you know, we um my brother and I will get out of a book and, you know, after we've watched the movie, uh, because we usually pick something that has a movie with it and done our report, we're immediately in something else. So, um yeah, so that that's pretty much it. That and um I also do dictations. So and that's where you are and there's several ways to do dictations, but you are um, the way we do it is I have different um, little pieces that I've taken, and I do it is as a unit of study in a way. And what I mean by that is I will take a certain topic, and the dictation will be for however many weeks about that topic. So our topic right now is the Gospels. So every all of our dictations are the Gospels, and I will read it. You know, it's either a sentence or a small paragraph, and he'll just listen, and then we. Um, I'll read it again until right, and that really helps with spelling, and it helps them to see. Oh, and then he'll check it after we've done that to see how accurate he was, and we'll do that two days in a row for the same one to see if he, you know, so he can see his improvement, and that helps him to see, you know, where periods are supposed to go, um, and kind of the flow of writing. So that's um that's really what I'm doing to to help with the and and a little bit I guess of a rant on whole word uh learning so uh that's what we do uh to help with our uh getting out of that whole word system and trying to re really emphasize phonetic reading and it takes practice um but you know practice makes progress so thank you so much for watching.